Richard, are you with us? Hey, guys. <laughs> Richard, good to see you, my friend. Can you hear us okay? I can. Great. Well, my, my friend Erin here, my lovely friend Erin, she's going to go ahead and interview you for, for uh, RevPack. So thanks for joining us. That sounds great, Forrest. Richard, thank you so much for joining us. And, uh, you know, it's really interesting. Uh, you're the National Co uh, Chapter Coordinator for the America's Future Foundation. Can you explain what the American Future Foundation does and how you got involved? Certainly. AFF and uh, you see when conservatives and libertarians weren't finding that they had a place to network or to talk about the ideas of freedom. And so a woman named Mary Sedell set up AFF uh, basically as a beltway institution. And in the past five or six years, it's expanded outside of DC um, to places like Chicago, where I work, uh, Raleigh, which is a new chapter we started, also Pittsburgh, Nashville, Denver, New York City, and Minneapolis. And we're starting some new chapters in Atlanta uh, this year. So what we do is uh, actually develop young leadership among people who believe in the ideas of freedom. And so we teach them how to speak well, how to be eloquent, how to uh, convey their points in very uh, succinct terms and convincing terms. And we network people of common values and virtues. So it's a lot of fun. I got involved when I worked at the Illinois Policy Institute, which is a think tank based in Chicago. A friend of mine was on the committee in Chicago and asked me if I wanted to join. If somebody's interested in become, you know, getting involved, you know, where would they go? How would they find out? And or, or how do you uh, select individuals, you know, to uh, kind of show them the reins? So what we do is we have a website, americasfuture.org, and anyone can go there and see where the chapters are in their area. We don't have chapters everywhere yet, but we're working. Um, in terms of uh, what they can do, they can always email me, Richard at AmericasFuture.org, uh, if they don't see their city listed on uh, AmericasFuture.org, um, and we can see about setting up a chapter. Like I said, we, we we're beginning one in Atlanta later this year and potentially elsewhere. For each um, given chapter, what is it essentially? Do you guys have organizations whereby you know you debate other teams? You know, how do you coordinate where? you know, this organization can get out the word for liberty? Well, we have a series of programs that we do in Chicago, and, and that's where I'm based, and so I'll kind of limit my uh, commentary to that. We've had people like your friend Forrest and Paul both participating in a, a debate uh, party that we had called Debate-a-Palooza, and so Paul was debating against the education director at the Heartland Institute on school vouchers, Forrest was debating against a local blogger on the Jefferson Memorial uh, arrest incident. We do events like that regularly. We do round tables. We're having one this coming Wednesday in Chicago where we're talking about whether America is still a meritocracy, whether uh, it's what you know or who you know. And increasingly, because of intervention by government, it's more who you know, which is unfortunate. So we're going to be talking about that on Wednesday. But in terms of what the programming is at the local chapter le level, that's completely driven by uh, the local committee leaders. And so what I do as part of my job is identify and recruit those people to become chapter leaders in cities. And so if any of your viewers are watching from Nashville, Denver, or Atlanta particularly, I'd love to talk with them if they'd be interested in developing a community of young professional, professional lovers of liberty because we're, we're relaunching things in those cities currently. How about other cities? Okay, say for instance, somebody lives in California and they want to activate, you know, some liberty-based, you know, do they contact the Washington chapter? Can they ch contact any other chapter to kind of get that ball rolling? How would you recommend they go about that? We have some plans for California. It might not be through this year, but there are great other organizations that we work with regularly. And one of them is called Liberty on the Rocks. Maybe some of your viewers have heard about it. Um, a colleague of mine named Amanda Teresi is based out of Denver, and she's the she runs Liberty on the Rocks, and uh, they're great groups. They, in fact, they were developed to respond to the drinking liberally drink, uh, groups that have emerged throughout the country, and they're uh, you know more progressive in in terms of their their policy. But Liberty on the Rocks, they're a bit different from AFF because they don't have programs, and their mission is not really to develop young leadership, but they're basically there for people who have our. Uh, worldview and, and appreciate liberty and, and don't want to force other views um, upon other people to get together and meet each other and develop community. So if AFF is not in your area, which it will be soon, I hope, in, in every city in the country, 
Uh, you can always contact uh, Amanda at Liberty on the Rocks. And there are so many other groups as well. There are think tanks. There are uh, activist groups. There's just so much happening right now in the Liberty Movement, which is just incredible to see. AFF involves, you know, individuals from all different kind of uh, political backgrounds. You know, do you find a lot of Democrats? Is it more prone to Republicans or independents? Or do you even see a wave of either uh, any of those groups? That's a good question, Aaron. Um, you know, over time, it's tended to be more Republican. We have a lot of members from the Chicago Young Republicans who attend our events in Chicago. But we are a strictly nonpartisan organization. It's educational in nature. And so we accept everyone, progressives, Democrats, liberals. You know, we all like to call ourselves liberals, but that's a difficult word to reclaim. Um, we have debates on, on torture and things like gay marriage and don't ask, don't tell. We've had people from the ACLU come in. In fact, this Wednesday at the meritocracy debate, we're going to have someone from Occupy Chicago. So we are an open forum. We you know, basically uh, subscribe to John uh, Stuart Mill's idea that the only kind of diversity that really matters is intellectual diversity. And so we endeavor really to bring new communities into um, this discussion about whether it's um, force or whether it's liberty. And we've had a lot of success with that in Chicago, and we're looking to do that outside of, uh, outside of Chicago as well. Well, has, has the AFF taken any active role for instance, for with some uh, some bills that have come by, like the NDAA, have, are they taking any active role in trying to, you know, circumvent that and or you know get that repealed? Are, are they getting involved in any of those liberty anti liberty sort of laws that have been uh, passed? Well, we don't do it that explicitly because we're not allowed to. Um, we're a 501c3 tax exempt organization, and so we can't really weigh in on specific legislation or candidates for office. But we do discuss things like that. Um, there are a lot of other ways that your viewers can uh, participate in the policy debate. And one of my favorite ways is through think tanks, which exist all throughout the country. In fact, there's a think tank, pro-liberty free market think tank, in almost every state in the country right now. Um, I mentioned before that I used to work with one called Illinois Policy Institute. And they're one of the finest, actually, pushing the envelope in uh, probably one of the least friendly places for liberty in the country. Um, but they're really working to make sure that the message of liberty is communicated to those people who policies like uh, the one you were speaking about before affect, things like school choice. Who's talking to the single mother on the south side of Chicago that vouchers might actually allow their kid to get the education that they deserve? So they do a lot of work in that regard on policy specifically. They develop policy and they work with legislators. Um, there are lots of other groups, you know, Downsize DC, you have a bunch of um, other, uh, Americans for Prosperity is another one that works on activating the movement pot potential for liberty. Um, and, and, you know, think tanks and all of these other groups exist throughout the year, regardless of whether it's an election year. And so you can always look to any free market group, um, you know, whether it's 2013, 2014, 2015, they're active all the time promoting the views of liberty. And, and that's just fantastic. And you don't have to wait till uh, another candidate comes up that's really talking about these things. How much of a presence do you have in the local schools, like the different colleges in Chicago? There's a number of five, six, seven different colleges in the Chicagoland area. Does AFF have a predominant uh, presence in the colleges in trying to uh, promote the, the concepts of liberty and also, you know, to, you know, provide a base for, you know, young students to know how to debate these issues and even learn the issues? Well, AFF doesn't do that specifically. We work a little bit with students, but our primary demographic is 22 to 40, so young professionals. But we do work with another group, which I admire more than anything else, and it's been around for about five years. It's called Students for Liberty, and there is a fantastic chapter of Students for Liberty down at the University of Chicago, um, and they are expanding like nobody's business. I think if you are a student and you're looking for a group that uh, stands for the ideas of freedom, you might look at studentsforliberty.org because they've got, I don't know, maybe hundreds, hundreds of different uh, chapters of their organization on campuses around the country. And we work with them because what we say is AFF is step two in the young person's life um, politically. And so step one really does have to be in college uh, whether you get it from your professors, which is uh, fairly unlikely, or whether you get it from peers and, and those few supportive people on campus 
Students for Liberty really supports great groups on campus, and then we work with them so once people graduate and they're in the working world, um, they have another place to go. You know, it's interesting that you put it as the step two part, and so which is very interesting, and then a nice way to you know set that tone, you know, because then you evolve into the more professional state, uh, and that's really in some ways when you become the most, uh, 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 you know, beneficial to the community because now you have a very different um, uh, perspective as a professional. Now, I also want to talk to you. You're a co-founder of the Liberty Markets Fund for Freedom. Can you tell me a little bit about that and how that's kind of evolved? Certainly. So it kind of goes back into what I was talking about before in terms of think tanks. We found that there are a few people uh, who really know all the things that are happening at the state level in terms of liberty-based public policy. And so what we created with the Liberty Markets Fund for Freedom is a way for small donors who are only giving maybe $10, $25, to contribute to a great set of liberty-based organizations nationwide. It's kind of like a mutual fund approach for donating, except you're not getting any monetary return on investment. So basically what the fund does is it has directors who choose the best organizations based on the metrics that we've designed and allows your $25 to go to five, six, seven great organizations along with the money of other small donors. And so it's a way to diversify uh, what you're contributing to and to monitor the effectiveness of your donation. Richard? We let Aaron take that interview, but we got to stick to a schedule. It is awesome having you. And uh, I know I go to the AFF events and I'm going to continue to do so. I'm a member. I'm involved and, and, and I've really appreciated the time that you've given us today and the chance to come debate in an open forum. So I'm going to see you out on the road. So thanks for, and if there's a last plug you want to get in, feel free to get it in here. This is your voice. Um, otherwise, I'll be seeing you out there on the streets of Chicago fighting the good fight. <laughs> Thanks, Forrest. Thanks, Aaron. Thanks, Jacob. And thanks, Paul. Uh, Liberty Markets Fund for Freedom. The website is thefundforfreedom.org. And I do have to say, although I'm in Chicago, I'm in Columbus this weekend, I'm seeing Ron Paul signs everywhere. So you got a good presence here in Ohio. That's fantastic. And by the way, uh, I want to congratulate you, and I'm jealous of your capitalism uh, sweatshirt. So <laughs> it's fantastic. All right, buddy. We'll, we'll see. For this. It's, it's, thanks very much. And we'll, we'll see you soon, man. Take care. Thanks, guys.